Hey, so in this workout, uh, we are going to target uh, some unilateral rhomboid stuff. Uh, we're going to activate glutes, we're going to activate abs, and then we're going to do another um, preparation for windmills. What we're going to do is build off of the previous videos. If you need any technique tips, um, take a look at some of our previous five minute workouts. Um, so we're going to really center our weight and that arm and both legs that are left down on the ground are really doing a lot of work along with our center. So we're going to keep the spine long. We're going to begin in an extended position with the dumbbell. I've got 15 pounds right now. So anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds would be a really good start. And then on the exhale, we're going to engage the rhomboids. You want to hold that elbow nice and close to the body and don't break. Inhale through the nose and exhale, stay connected at the hips. Make sure you're not deviating. Nice long spine. And we'll repeat one more on this side. So now we're working towards uh, a straight leg windmill, but here we're in a kneeling position. And in previous videos, I went over the alignment, but I want in this case, your left leg, your toe, your knee, and your shoulder would be in the same line. And then as you're working with the kettlebell, which could certainly be a dumbbell too, okay? What we're doing is we're gonna pack the shoulder. So you're gonna set all your shoulder stabilizers, but then you're gonna kind of feel like you're punching the ceiling at the same time. So you're gonna pack and punch, but you're not gonna just punch, right? You wanna pack and punch. And then we're gonna do a hip hinge with some thoracic rotation. So you're gonna keep your eye on the kettlebell. Your hand can come across your chest. You're just gonna start to bend back a little bit, engage that core, and exhale, punch the ceiling. Inhale, engage the core. Make sure you're not rotating with that right leg. Exhale, punch the ceiling, pack that shoulder. Core engaged, hips back, toes down on that left side. Exhale, punch. We'll do one more. Inhale. Brace. So what we're gonna do here is we're really gonna hone in on, really focus on the inner and outer unit and how we wanna create a brace, okay? You get nice lumbar lengthening. You're gonna think about a string on top of the head. And what I want you to do is with your feet shoulder width apart and knees bent, you're gonna to start to think about uh, disassociating your sacrum from your low back. So you're softening. The other way to think about it is that your tailbone is elongating away from your low back and your rib cage and your hip bones are connecting. My inner unit's on, so my TVA, my pelvic floor, my multifidus are lightly engaged by about a millimeter. And then as you exhale through your lips, you're applying that tension between the rib cage and the hip bones, engaging the obliques and the outer unit. And inhale. So I'm just getting slightly closer to the ground and I'm really feeling it as an abdominal contraction and a lengthening through the spine. What I'm not doing is doing these old school pelvic tilts where I'm pushing from my feet and I'm very absent in the core. So these posterior tilts are really good for preps for any kind of weight training, lifting, but they're also good to just kind of engage compression and to stabilize a little bit. Good. You can even bring the fingertips back behind the head, lengthen through the spine. Think about elongating the elbows and then as you exhale, keeping everything very still and lifting one leg. So you're thinking about that multifidus, you're thinking about not allowing the pelvis to move under the weight of the leg. So you're thinking about it in elongation through the spine. Exhale, complete that compression through the outer unit. Inhale, release the leg. And exhale, 
Bring that leg up and make sure your body's not surrendering. You're engaging and you're staying locked down. So this is one of my favorite glute isolation exercises when it comes to getting just a really good burn. So for those of you that haven't been working your glutes, it's a great opportunity to really strike all the fibers in the glute, very ri low risk to the low back. So you can really like disassociate from the low back and really work your glutes. Um, for some of us, it would be a really good glute warm up to get a really good burn. So if you're working the right leg, I want you to go down on your left forearm but you're not gonna totally load your left side. I want you to kind of stay in the center a little bit. Nice long spine, you're gonna press this arm out away from you for some stability, pack the shoulder. And then what I want you to do is engage your glutes so that the knee is up as high as it'll go, but you're not falling back, right? You're staying in the center and then exhale, kick back. Watch that the lumbar is not giving way. So you wanna keep the tension, some light tension on the abdominals. It's not a big heavy movement, so just engage through the breath and the knee. Now what a lot of people do is they don't bring that leg up as high as they can. So you want to get all the fibers in that fan in the glute, okay? So really trying to work the whole glute and press We'll do one more. So we'll abduct as much as we can, extend. So an inhale to raise the leg up, an exhale to lock in the extension.